Father Patrick Briscoe is editor of Our Sunday Visitor and host of the popular podcast, God's Flaining. He's also one of the official preachers of the National Eucharistic Revival. Father Briscoe joins us now to talk about the work of evangelizing the Eucharist. Father Briscoe, it's so great to have you back. What has it been like traveling the country preaching about Jesus Christ in the Eucharist? Have Catholics been receptive? Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so happy to be here with you in order to say yes, they have that. <laughs> That's good. I am so moved by everything that I've seen. I mean, some of the most powerful events have been things that maybe we wouldn't consider a, a big deal because they don't sound like a fancy program. But seeing a renewal of devotion, especially to Eucharistic adoration, has borne a lot of fruit. I've preached, for example, a number of, at a number of parishes where they've reincorporated the 40 hours devotion mm. in a very beautiful way. Many people, maybe, maybe even your viewers, have not participated in 40 hours before the revival. And bringing back that devotion alone has been totally worth all the effort of the Eucharistic revival in order to, to facilitate parishes, to allow people to come together in a parish for that special period of prayer and devotion before the Blessed Sacrament. Absolutely. Well, how did you prepare for this? And has your understanding of the Eucharist changed at all? It certainly has as a Eucharistic preacher. One thing I've noticed in myself as a priest was the, the, the call, the example, to be more attentive to the way we celebrate Mass, more attentive to the Eucharistic mystery, not to be hasty, but to be totally conscious of what I'm doing as a priest when offering Mass. So that's one way that the revival has really impacted me in a personal way. Another is just the opportunity to think about how many beautiful parts of the theology of the Eucharist and of Eucharistic devotion, like Eucharistic adoration and the theology of the Mass that there are to preach on. For, for a preacher, you can never be bored. We can never <laughs> run out of things to say about the Eucharist, about the Blessed Sacrament. There are just so many wonderful strains to pick up and to explain to people and to share that it's just such a great font of, of life, you know, as the church teaches, the source and summit of our life. Well, you've talked about how people have received this with a big resounding yes, but do you see a difference in how age groups respond to sharing the message of Eucharistic devotion? You know, one thing that's interesting is that yeah, they do respond differently. So I see young people, for example, more excited, and this might be a little counterintuitive, I see young people more excited about quiet Eucharistic adoration, <laughs> about more solemn devotion. And I see older people excited about opportunities to build community. Uh, for example, one parish, I did a triduum dedicated to Blessed Carlo Acutis, and we had several afternoon training sessions about evangelization. And uh, the, the crowd that I thought was going to come to that was very different than the crowd that ended up coming to that. Um, so yeah, I do. I would say that I've seen a, a big difference in, in responses to the generations, and that's because people have different needs. Mm. We have to anticipate that. Young people are looking for silence and stability, and older people are looking for, for community. That's beautiful, and it's very true. Well, we know that polls and statistics can be wrong, and that last CARA survey was done in 2022. Do you think another study would reveal a change already, as in a significant impact after the last year of the diocesan revival and now the parish revival? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see that to be the case. I mean, for me, the biggest gap in the polls is the people that know what the church teaches about the Blessed Sacrament and yet can't themselves profess that faith. So, so there, that's where we've got the biggest challenge, I feel. As a Dominican, I love explaining the church's teaching and being very clear about our doctrine. Um, and for me, it's a great, I have great desire, great passion for people to know exactly what we, what we mean in our Catholic understanding of, of the Eucharist as the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. But there is a gap between professing that knowledge, ha having been informed that and actually believing that it is true. And for me, that's the most interesting gap in these polls that we have to face. Absolutely. But then where does a lay Catholic person start? It's easy with God's grace. <laughs> we're praying, <laughs> Absolutely. We're praying that Jesus would do something because the Lord can and he will. Uh, you know, there's one friar that's fond of saying, and I, I love this truth. I'm so consoled by it. God has plenty of time and he has plenty of money. <laughs> and it's so true. And that, 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 that what we owe Jesus is our hearts. That's what we owe him. And that's why I think this principle of the Eucharistic revival is so beautiful, because the most important thing we can do for the Lord is to go be with him, to pray in front of a tabernacle in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, to be ourselves committed to Eucharistic adoration, 
That is where we begin in prayer, in, in by loving Jesus and by spending time with him as our friend. And then he'll lead us to the people that we can invite into that friendship. Well, if through prayer someone feels moved to have a Eucharistic preacher at their parish, how do they go about requesting one? Yeah, absolutely. So head on over to the Eucharistic Revival website, and you can request a Eucharistic preacher there. Otherwise, many of my Dominican brothers are Eucharistic preachers, and they're fabulous um, Franciscan Fathers of the Renewal who yes. are Eucharistic preachers. So in our respective religious orders, you can reach out to our orders and uh, we'll, we'll be quickly at your door if we're available. I love that. Well, real quick, just because we're running out of time, will you be participating in these pilgrimages that are going to form this cross over the United States? Absolutely. So that pilgrimage is going to come right through Washington, D.C., so I'll be here for this pilgrimage. I think the pilgrimage is a very beautiful moment because we li we literally be carrying the Eucharist across the country, and it gives everyone an opportunity to participate in the, in the gathering that the Eucharistic Congress will be. We know as Catholics it's important to go on pilgrimage and to gather together, to actually be present together. And so the, being able to participate in these pilgrimages is such a beautiful opportunity for us to grow in our faith and to show our love for the Blessed Sacrament. Absolutely, through that wonderful witness. Well, thank you so much, Father Briscoe. We'll see you at the Congress and on the road with the Eucharist. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you.